Welcome back. Uh, today, um, I want to talk about a few things um, related to the post-divorce existence. Uh, the first thing is, you know, and and I just want to say right off the bat that, you know, everybody's experience obviously is different. Everybody gives the same preamble when they give advice. Uh, so your, your mileage may vary uh, with what I'm about to say to you. But um, there are pro probably some very similar stages that one goes through after, uh, and, you know, the divorce is signed on the dotted line and, and accepted by the judge. And um, that's what I want to talk about today. Um, so after I got divorced, you know, there, there is this feeling that I had uh, and I, I kind of have coined it in my mind that maybe somebody else said this, but I didn't read this. Uh, I call it the ghost limb stage. You know, somebody who loses a limb or a finger still imagines that that finger is there. And, and I think that it was the fact that it hadn't really dawned upon me the seriousness and severity of the situation and the severity of which this situation would then eventually unfold in front of me. And so when you get divorced, you sometimes feel as if, you know, your, your, not your partner is still there, but you're still in that kind of dual mode of, of being with somebody and you don't necessarily recognize how to be alone and how to just, you know, accept the thoughts that come to your mind and and not completely freak out that like, you know, hey, you don't have somebody to kind of bounce ideas off of and or to pull that load with you. And so I, you know, in terms of like the, the ghost limb, sometimes you, you even, you think about that person multiple times a day and you may even say their name. You may even utter their name out. And that is just, I, I think a natural beginning as this thing slowly unwinds and eventually you are more at peace with the situation. But you have to, you have to go through this in order to get there. And when that, and, and none of these stages that I'm going to talk about are exclusive, like one has to happen before the other, uh, you know, I think they happened at various points. They came back at various points. So that's, that's, there's, there's no like systematic order to this, but I would say that the next situation that one has to deal with is the despair. And, you know, that can be a, a very consuming situation in one's life, um, because it's, it's the snuffing out of like, it feels like the snuffing out of hope. It feels in many ways that how can you go on? And, you know, you have people all around you saying, Hey, you know, just, you know, truck on through and you can make it. And, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna come out stronger and, you know, maybe you find somebody, maybe you go get laid or whatever it is that will make you happy. And it's just, not necessarily like that. I'm not saying it doesn't work for other people, but that certainly wasn't the state of mind that I was willing to even entertain, you know? Um, and, you know, for me, uh, you know, I, I think a self-diagnosis here, I think I am sort of affected by the seasons. And, um, you know, given the fact that like my divorce coincided with the onset of fall and, you know, winter here in in, in New York City, um, I went through some pretty bleak days, um, and that will happen. And um, and sometimes it, it just seems relentless. You just don't want to get out of bed. And as I said in my previous video, you know, if you feel sadness, you feel sadness, and you, you have to ride that wave. And I truly believe that. I mean, it's not as if I'm sitting here today 
just spouting off this stuff because I've had a lot of time to think about it. And, and that's something else in this situation in the post-divorce existence. You have a lot of time, you know, more time than you have ever imagined because you're not filling up your days with someone else uh, to either be concerned about, worried about, you know, just the, the marriage itself as an entity that takes energy and, and t demands your attention. And when that goes away, there is this massive void. And so when you have a void, you know, how do you fill that? And so your mind then, then takes over because you are, you are grieving. You are grieving the process, at least for me, I was grieving the process of, of the loss of a relationship, the loss of a friendship, the loss of all the friendships that came with the marriage as well as just feeling kind of like, how do I move on from this? <laughs> and all of that is no one, see, no one who has not gone through divorce can, I think, really give you advice in this regard because, you know, they, they're just shooting in the dark. Uh, they don't know, uh, you know, Maybe they've gotten their stuff from self-help books, but they, they don't know unless they've gone through it. And of course, nobody hopes they go through it. So, you know, and I, and I think that ultimately, uh, one, of, one of the ways in which you can combat the real downside drag and soul-sucking feeling of, uh, of the despair part of all this is to try and do what I did uh, which is I joined a gym and you know for <laughs> exercise truly does help in a variety of ways um, besides the fact that it helps with the endorphins in your brain it makes you feel happier more positive um, it gives you something to pour your anger and sadness into sometimes it is it is an uphill slog to try and get on that treadmill or get on whatever machine that you use in the thing to motivate yourself to even leave the house sometimes is hard um, but I did that and you know I've, I've stuck with that and I think I think that has helped me I mean it has helped me to sort of be a a kind of a, a buffering you know so to speak of my intense emotional waves um, you know with with some you know obviously good results I mean plus you know it just keeps you healthy I mean depression about one's past life and that's what you're mourning you're mourning the passing of your life into something new something unknown and uh and I, and I think that, you know, there, there's no duration that you can put on this, no expiration date. But that said, um, this is one of the things that I, I, I did that, that has helped me. Um, you know, and, I, and I've stuck with it, you know, through thick and thin. I've stuck with going to the gym. Uh, and... And I have been there, like, on that treadmill, fighting every second, wanting to get off and just not having, not being able to summon that internal energy, that positivity to be able to continue. And one minute turns into two minutes, turns into three, and it's like, literally, the gears are grinding, and it's like, you're just fighting this internal feeling of, like, I want to go home. What do I care about being in a, in a gym with all these like shiny happy people, you know, who are like sitting there kissing their biceps and whatnot. It's like, it's so anathema to how you are at that moment. People in their like, you know, highlighter colored like spandex, you know, and it's just the whole thing in the, in the thumping positive music. It's like, get me out of here, you know, give me Joy Division or give me like The Cure or something. But, you know, at some points, I was just like, you know, you, you know, I had to do it, and I like would download some music that would like put me into a more. So I found like, okay, if I wasn't in for the happy music, I would go for the angry music, because 
as uh, this one band, the lyric from one of these bands that I used to listen to, is that anger is an energy, right? So, and, and, it, and it is, it is an energy, and that at least was something I could tap into, and that gave me some kind of buoyancy. And then, when all of this, you know, kind of disperses, you're sort of left with what I call a Groundhog Day existence. Now, I'm not talking about Puxatawney Phil coming out of his thing and seeing his shadow. I'm talking about the film where Bill Murray wakes up every single morning and it's the same repetition of things. Now, this is what I think is a very interesting stage is that you get to a point if you can say you climbed up this hill and you've reached this point and it's like you're just you're there you can't go any further and you're there and you're just trying to figure out what's next so you wake up and every day becomes the same you're looking for work you're looking for something to do. You, you slip into some patterns. You watch your YouTube, you go on Facebook, you, you know, you walk around the block, you know, you go buy from your favorite grocer, you go to your coffee shop, you do these things, you've developed some kind of pattern, but it it gets old really quickly. And, you know, there are periods of time even up to a few months ago where I was just like, when are things gonna change? You know, and how can I affect that change? You know, sometimes change comes from within or it's an external kind of force that leads you to change. But as we're coming out of like, you know, winter here um, and into the spring, and um, I, I find myself just naturally getting more positive about my existence, but also the fact that realizing that, and, and this once again, it's like, it, I'm not, you know, the, you know I, I shouldn't be scared of starting that new stage in my life and that I have a lot to offer and that, you know, and that, you know, I, I can eventually maybe find somebody new in my life. All of these things I couldn't have said just a, a simple few months ago because, you know, when you, when you, you, you reach these points during the post-divorce existence where it's kind of like a stock, it's, you're going up and then you have this sudden drop. And then, you know, it's, it spooks you because it says, hey, maybe this is based upon very unshaky, shake, very shaky ground. And when is it that I'm gonna feel that the floor, when, when the thing finally, when it drops, that the drop is not as precipitous. And I think that that is the combination of time. You've had the time to to think about things. And I think that's probably why, and, and what is the most important about this is time. I say time heals all wounds, but it's not just that, it's that you have the time to think about things. And, you know, I mean, I'm not advocating if you have a job, you take off time from your job, but you know, and it's a good thing. I mean, obviously there are people who get divorced who have full-time jobs and it's not that it's a blip on the radar for them, it's more that it's, it, it impacts them less because their mind is diverted towards something else. And that's the thing when I don't have a full-time job, I have just part-time work or what do you call it? Freelance work that comes to me. I'm in the process of looking for work, but you know, that's proved elusive, but that's another topic. Anyway, what, I, what I think though, is that, you know, for me, I, while the time was sometimes unbearable to sit there and be caught up in thinking about things. I think there was also a value, you know, to that, you know, the value is that you're getting in touch with your feelings. And when the, the sadness wells up and you cry, you know, and there's nothing wrong with crying. It's actually a wonderful thing. 
but it can be intense. It can be really, really intense and, uh, and, and make everything seem even worse. But eventually the, the tears then like give way and you feel more calm. And, and so for guys, you know, they always say guys don't necessarily are not in touch with their emotions or don't cry. I've cried a lot in this, in this process. And, and I, and, and I encourage you to let the feeling take you because fighting back tears is, is never a good thing. And it can, it is very therapeutic if you do let it flow. So, you know, having the time to examine things where things went wrong in the relationship, but also not just that, but to just try and as a friend of mine says, to turn things towards a little bit different direction. I mean, we all build our lives in certain ways and this is a pattern change. This is a massive pattern change that you say to yourself, how am I going to do these things? Because for me, you know, just coming back to the United States is a whole new thing. I mean, I'm an American, but I've been living overseas for so damn long that I've gotten used to the ways of things in China and not to the realities of the United States. So there are a lot of things at play for me to be able to try and slot myself into this new existence. And I think that I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a handle on, on where I need to kind of move things, but uh, I'm not 100% there yet, but you know, I mean, I'm still in, in this process and talked to somebody the other day and they're a few years into this process and it's still difficult. So, hey, you know, I, I, I don't have it all figured out and I'm sure that there's gonna be more waves to come, but the waves are very different and uh, the duration and, and the intensity you know, are, are very different. So I just wanted to kind of talk about this, you know, that you have the ghost limb stage of thinking the person's still there and kind of feeling that you're still sort of, the remnants of this relationship is sort of still there. It hasn't really kind of dawned upon you. And then there is the, the stage of despair, you know, the great despair, the great drop into the darkness and, um, and, and what that means. And then, and then there's Groundhog Day, you know, there's the kind of the repetition of, of things every single day that seem the same, you know, it's, it feels the same and you get sick of it. It's almost like, you know, being forced to, 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 to lie in a bed, you know, 24 hours a day without being able to get up. It's like, it's, it's, it's uh, mind numbingly boring and you feel like, what can I do? Where can I go? And how am I going to be able to pick myself up from this? So, but don't despair about this kind of situation because you, you can and will get out of it. Reaching out to your good friends, letting people know that you need help and talking to people uh, is a great release for, for your mind and and just being among people is actually a really great thing don't discount that other people have a lot of great things to offer you and it's just the energy of being around people that is uh is very nutritive to to one's soul and so i think um you know it's very easy to just shut yourself off and i did that but then i started not to and, and I found that like that is a is a great kind of um, inspiration to meet other people and to get that energy and inspir and energy off of them. So that's uh, that's it for today. I just wanted to impart those words to you guys. Um, like I said, one size does not fit all in the in the grieving process in the in the post-divorce existence, but hopefully you'll have, find something useful from this. And if you like the video, please press like. And if you want to subscribe, I'll have more videos coming in the future. All right, you guys take care. Bye.